Everyone knows that the policing situation in America is a little dicey at the moment, with many high-profile incidents lighting up the news feeds of people across the country. There have been all kinds of calls for reform, for funding changes, and for cultural changes to the way that we view the role of police in society. However, one thing I've been pondering lately is something I haven't seen talked about much. That's the role of the car in the negative police encounters we've seen in America. Myself and many others recognize that America is a car-dependent society. You essentially need a car to function in America, especially if you live outside of an urban center, or sometimes even in it. While I thought about this, I thought about how car dependence affects various areas of my life, from health, to convenience, to costs, among other things. One thing that recently came to mind was how being forced to drive a car affects my view of the police. One thing anyone who drives a car can relate to is being constantly on the lookout for police cars. Whenever we see one, we hit our brakes and start driving like a model citizen for a few seconds, then return to normal shortly after. We're often paranoid about being stopped by police for even minor infractions, and for several reasons. One is that we could face a monetary fine, which according to statistics, nearly 41 million people receive driving citations every year, with the average fine amount being $152. Another is the series of violent encounters that have stemmed from traffic stops. American police are known to be particularly aggressive and gung-ho when it comes to traffic stops and enforcing the law, and this has led to many fatal incidents. Data shows that nearly 600 people have been killed in incidents stemming from traffic stops since 2017, many starting with innocuous causes. Air freshener hanging from rearview mirror, headlight out, license plate issue, the list goes on. Police, especially in suburban communities with less going on, seem to love micromanaging drivers to the point of the smallest violations, or at the very least use those violations as pretexts to stop them for other reasons. It certainly isn't something that promotes a good relationship with the public. Traffic stops in particular are the most common way that the public interacts with the police, and traffic-related calls account for the largest percent of police service calls at 16.8%. So if this is the most common way we interact with the police, surely it influences our perception and relationship with them. A lot of people in particular view them as sort of tax collectors for the government, aggressively enforcing traffic laws in order to obtain revenue for the state, while other people view them as harassing people for minor issues which can lead to deadly consequences. This of course is not how we should view police as a society, at least we shouldn't want to view them this way. We should want to view our police in a much better light, rather than being paranoid every time we drive past a police car that we might face some sort of ticket or monetary fine. Many people have started to think of solutions then. Why don't we stop allowing police to initiate traffic stops for minor violations? Why don't we have unarmed traffic enforcement? Etc. Etc. But there's one solution that perhaps solves things better than everything else that no one is talking about. Why don't we reduce our car dependency as a country? As we all know, the costs that come with being a car owner are high. Monthly payments, insurance, gas, then your headlight goes out, then you get pulled over and get a ticket for the headlight, etc. But being able to walk or bike somewhere comes with minimal to no cost to us, and the risks of facing some sort of enforcement action from police is also exceptionally lower. It's much harder to break laws while walking, for example, and even if you do, they're often less consequential than laws you can break while driving. It isn't as risk-prone a behavior in general. I mean, everyone tells you to drive safe, but no one tells you to walk safe. Even things like public transit can cost considerably less than owning a car if the system is effectively designed. In addition to this, with less car dependence in society, police would have to respond to less traffic calls, which would free them up to do more important work. With less traffic calls and less traffic stops, negative encounters with the public would hopefully decrease, which in turn would lead to a more positive police-public relationship. And most importantly, it would stop giving police an easy pretext to micromanage the public and continue to hurt their pockets. Now believe me, I'm all for positive traffic enforcement, especially for things like drunken drivers, but nobody can deny that sometimes the police go overboard when it comes to handing out tickets for driving offenses, especially for people who are already in financial hardships. The plethora of driving-related fines you can face can be daunting and stress-inducing, to say the least, particularly if there's no viable alternative to driving. So what do you guys think? Is car dependence an overlooked factor which contributes to our negative perception of police in America? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching.